Hi, Stuart from Provenance. I'm here to talk to you today about an alternative Christmas centerpiece. If you don't fancy a turkey or a goose this year, we're finding that beef is becoming more and more popular. So in true Provenance style, we found a way to do a good twist on the roast beef and our chef Barry has come up with a porcini mushroom stuffing to go under the cap of the rib on top of the beef for your roast. So I'm gonna take this and turn it into your Christmas centerpiece. So the first thing we do with a dry aged four rib of beef is we'll chine the backbone. So that's just separating the main sheet backbone here from the ends of the ribs. We've had that done for us already. Here's one I prepared earlier. And the next step after that is to just take out the blade of the shoulder. You just get the end of the shoulder blade in there. So let me just come in, take that out obviously doesn't make for good eating. Now, pull that one out here. Now something like this, that can always, if you do end up with this and you're doing this butchery yourself, that can go in to be roasted and go for your gravy, but we're hoping you come and buy a ready prepared rib of beef from us. So once I've done that, I need to line up and take off some of this cap of the outside to expose the ribs so I can French trim them. Now French trimming is, you know, it's really all about the aesthetics. It's about the display. It's not adding or taking away anything from uh, the final product. We love it because it looks good. And if you're gonna do it, you have to do it right and leave nothing on the bone. Otherwise you're gonna get little burnt bits because it's in the oven for so long. So I'll show you how to do that. Line this up, just leaving a little bit out. I'm going to come right through here. And then underneath to expose the tops of the ribs. Once we get to that stage, you can see where those five ribs are on the four rib of beef. Now this rib of beef is from North Yorkshire, just on the edge of the North Yorkshire moors. We've worked with some farmers up there since we started at Provenance back in 2013. And it's just consistently good beef from traditional breed animals. So this is around six weeks aged and we'll start laying down a huge number of four ribs mid November ready for Christmas. So we make sure that everything is as aged for Christmas as it is the rest of the year, despite the fact that obviously there is an increased demand at that time of year. So what I'm doing here is just removing sections of the intercostal muscles. Trimming around there. Just got a little edge of a rib right on the end there. I'll come right through here and remove. Okay, so that looks pretty similar to a French trimmed rib of beef, but what you really need to do now is make sure you remove all the meat from it. And that is a relatively slow process, but here we go. So now we've got to this stage, we're going to take the rib that we have here and you can see it sort of looks much more clearly defined when you have the French trim. We're going to take it off the backbone, then we're going to roll out the cap and stuff it with the mushroom stuffing. So I'm just going to come in here, you can see working the rib away from the sheet bones that you have there. Trying to leave as little on the bones as possible. So you can see you've got all these aged edges around here, which you have to remove before the roast, obviously. Okay, and then as we come through here, you'll start to see the paddy whack. Which is this thick bit of rubbery 
sinew in here which is definitely needs to be removed because it does not make good eating and this is the paddy whack as in knickknack knack paddy whack give the dog a bone so this muscle well this sort of piece of sinew here was used as a dog chew and it was also given to teething children to chew on back in Victorian times. I think they'd probably boiled it clean before then. So once you come through there, remove the backbone. That's what you've got there. Put this in here for now. So the next stage is to tidy up a little bit and then I'm gonna roll this cap off, split it right out and so you can see where we're going to put the stuffing. Just tighten that bit there. So, as you can see, relatively clearly, you've got the rib, the, the, the eye of the rib, the rib eye there, but you've got this section of meat across the top here with the fat across the top. Now this, you've got two options here. You can leave the meat on, uh, as I'm going to do today, and as I prefer, because I really love the depth of flavor you get from this piece of meat. It's got slow cooking properties, like a piece of brisket or if you imagine the ribs run over here, this becomes a short rib. So it's not a million miles away from Jacob's Ladder, short rib sort of slow cooking, fatty, really rich tasting meat. I love it because it protects the ribeye on a slower cook. It means you can turn the temperature down, get some heat on the outside, you're not gonna overcook the middle. But if you want something a little finer and you don't want to have this slightly tougher eating bit of meat that requires a different cooking approach on the outside, we can remove that for you, remove the meat and just tie this thin layer of fat back on and that's much more of like a traditional coat de boeuf. It is a more refined offering, but for me, a big Christmas centerpiece, everything else around that is gonna look special. So I wanna see something as big, as impressive as possible on the plate. So I'm gonna come through here now, peel this back so we can see what's going on. And then we will bring in the stuffing. So you have to be really careful here because you don't want to nick into the ribeye. You just want to go through the surface, go through this natural connective tissue that you got here and separate it out. Just using the tip of the knife. Okay, so that with the fat back tied back on is one option or with the whole section tied back on is the other. So now it's time to stuff it.